we are at a point in time where there is not clear what the development path for countries, for African countries is. The export led growth model of development is under enormous strain these days. In my view, mainly because of policy, because of the policy choices that advanced countries have made, uh, the turn away from multilateralism, but also because of the techn technological developments and the increasing uh, prevalence of automation. So against this, this, this uh, uh, background, it's more important than ever for countries to have some model, some vision of how they can develop. And I think that's what the World Bank could potentially offer. I suggest one in my memo, which is regional integration. Uh, many countries, especially in Africa, are too small in terms of economic size and too resource starved to make it on their own. On the trade side, this is already happening to a certain extent. We've seen the emergence of many regional trade agreements, including uh, RCEP, including AFSTA. Uh, it's happening through trade facilitation, and the World Bank has a very active and very successful trade facilitation program. But it could also go beyond trade. Much, much effort needs to be uh, focused on uh the actual transformation of uh, companies and then sectors of, um, of the economies of Central Asia. And I say transformation because in the vast uh, majority of uh, cases in the corporate sector uh, and the enterprise sector, this transformation has not really even started. This is much more important also for a fact that um, that Penny mentioned in her presentation, which is that both because of the neighborhood, these economies are very close to China geographically, but also because of geopolitical interest being between China, Russia, and uh, the European Union. Over the last decade or so, China has very heavily invested through the Belt and Road Initiative in infrastructure, in agricultural sector, in logistics, um, and in a number of other, in energy, and in a number of other areas. Uh, this is where that transparency becomes or has become an issue and uh, multilateral uh, good lending practices need to be uh, respected. EBRD has a portfolio in the region of about two and a half billion dollars, uh, uh, but just for comparison purposes, this is about half of the portfolio in Turkey, uh, for example. First priority, well, obviously, controlling the pandemic and controlling COVID the countries in Latin America have less resources to deal with these problems. Plus, um, given institutional weakness and lack of political leadership, this just makes the situation worse. These countries need to continue providing support to the poor. Um, and this has to be aligned with fiscal constraints. It's a region that's rife with fiscal constraints. Again, it's heterogeneous. It's a heterogeneous picture. Some, some countries have more um, or tighter fiscal constraints than others. Programs need to be aligned with these fiscal constraints, but they do need to be focused on the population. And to give an example here, Brazil launched a very ambitious emergency basic income program that did sustain the economy throughout most of 2020. That, that program is going to expire at the end of December. And the about 70 million people who were benefited by this program will be left with nothing in the middle of an epidemic that is worsening. So this is something that definitely needs the immediate attention of the Inter-American Development Bank. Prior to the pandemic, borrowings from China by African countries had contributed to the economic development of those countries, especially with regard to infrastructure. But now things have turned sour and adjustments need to be made. Unica could play a much more important role in encouraging the transparency of debt to China and making sure its terms are known uh, to the international community and to the populations of those countries. There will likely be increased in, uh, pressures from the United States and other countries to make sure the assistance they provide to the African countries are not used to repay the debt of the private sector and to China. And Unica has to prevail uh, upon the private sector and the Chinese creditors to participate in debt relief uh, urgently.